So the law of science is just, um, well, here it is, it's down here. And so the law of science basically says, given, given, um, actually I'm gonna do this slightly out of order than the way I've written it, I'm gonna do it here. So let's pretend, so let's define what an ABC triangle is. And so here, if I draw a triangle, I'm gonna call, if I call this angle here, angle A, um, the side opposite is side A. So this is angle A, side A. And then here, if this was angle B, it would be side little b. And here, if it's angle C, um, this would be side little c. So it would be angle A. And then, so this is what we use as the term an angle of A. Let's see, angle of B, angle of C. And then here we have the side of A, B, and C that correspond to it. Um, sometimes you'll see this also, sometimes you'll see it this way where you'll have A on the outside and the little A over here, B on the outside, the B over here, the C on the outside and the C over here. This is also another way of writing this. Um, these are all the same because here they just put, instead of putting the A on the inside, they put it on the outside, so. And so what Laws of Science says is that um, the ratio of A over, the angle of A over A is equal to the ratio of the angle of B over B, which is equal to the ratio of angle C over C, or another way of writing this is A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. Because if I flip if I flip these, right? Um, if I flip if I flip each one of them, it's still equal to each other. So either one works, you can use whatever one. So this is what the law, law of science says. Now what do we use this for? Well, we can use this to solve triangles, right? In general, a, a triangle has six parts, three angles, three sides. And if you know those, you know basically everything you need to know. Um, as long as at least, um, and so as long as you know at least three of these parts, right? As long as at least one of these three. Oh, so you can determine the, you can determine the triangle as, as long as you know by three parts of its six parts, as long as you know at least one of its parts uh, is a side. And the reason you have to know at least one side, because let's pretend I have a triangle here, uh, you know, let's just perform, I have, oh, well, let's just say an equilateral triangle. So all the degrees are 60, right? So that's an equilateral triangle, right? So I know all the degrees, but here, if I make all the sides, all the sides could be one, all the sides could be two, all the sides could be like three. And so if I don't know at least one of these lengths, I can't determine the triangle. Now the opposite's not true. If I know all the lengths, I can determine what the angles were on the inside. Um, so, so law of science deals with some of these and law of cosines will deal with the rest of these. And so law of science will deal with the, if you know an angle side and an angle, what do we mean by that? It's like here, if I have a triangle, if I know, if I know A, I know this angle C and I know B, oops. That's the exact opposite. That's this one, right? <laughs> if I know it a side, an angle and a side, and here it is. An angle would be side angle is here if I know what B is, here I know what A is, and I have the angle and I know the side C, I can determine this, right? So that's what we mean by angle side angle or side angle angle or side side angle or uh, side 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 so that's what this means um and so given this we can we can solve triangles so let me draw each of the cases above i guess i've drawn them up there when i have room down here so for here case one right case one is um i know one side and two angles and I can either know this angle so let me kind of draw it in dotted lines for saying the ones I don't know right so I either know this side and the angle and the two angles that touch it or I can know 
one of the sides, this angle, and this angle, right? And that will still allow me to solve the triangle. Here for case two, what do I mean by side angle or side side angle? So case two means I know one side, I know another side, and then I know the angle here. So for case uh, three, right, side angle side, um, I know a side, I know another side, I know the angle between them, and that's all I know, okay? So this is case three. And then case four is I know the side, a side, a side. Uh, but I know nothing about the angles between them. So these first two cases are solved by the law of sines, right? So I'm going to use law of sines for this one. The second two cases will be the next section where we're going to do law of cosines for this. Okay. Um, basically, all you need to really draw from this is um, when to use which, right? Here, if it's if it's uh, ang angle side angle or angles or side angle angle, we're going to be using law of sines here. If I have side side angle, I'm going to use law of sines here. If I have side angle side, I'm going to move law of cosine or side side side, I can use law of cosines. Now, what if you know more than, what if you know more than three pieces of information? Say I knew three sides and an angle, well, all the better. Then you have, then all your options open up to you. Then you can choose whatever you want, right? Um, if you know less than three, um, say I knew just a side and an angle, that's not enough to solve the triangle, right? So you have to have at least three. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. So let's actually solve ourselves a triangle. So here, it's completely all drawn out for you. And here we have most of the, the things. So let's, so here we have three bits of information. What bits of information do we have? We have this side right here. Uh-oh. Let me write on this layer so I can write over. I know this side. I know this angle. I don't know this side. And I don't know this side. So this is a side angle angle situation um, where we know the side of B, or we know side C, we know angle C, and we know angle A, right? So to solve a triangle means to find all its angles, right? C, and then A, B, and C, and we're going to... And when I ask you to solve a triangle on the quiz, on the quiz or the test, I'll probably list all these out and give you, and let you get freebie points, right? Because um, we we know what two of these are. You know, this is 25 degrees, right? I don't know. I might give you these and then tell you to fill out the rest. Um, here we have A is 20 degrees, right? Not Celsius. I've lost my mind. Why did I put a Celsius on that? You can tell that I'm tired. And uh, if I was putting degrees, because for some reason, the book that I'm using um, uses uh, uses degrees for these two sections. And then it goes back to radians. I'm like, OK. It's fine, you should be comfortable in both. So, so B is 135. Uh, oh, I was like, kind of? Yeah, so it's really close to 130. Uh, no, it should be 135. Why, why do we know it's 135? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, seems vaguely familiar. How do I know what this angle is? How did how did you get one thirty five? Yeah, because each of the triangles. So, uh, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equal one hundred and one hundred eighty. And pretty soon, I'm just gonna drop the angle and just write A, B, and C, assuming you know that they're angles. 180. So here I have 20. Um, here I have 25. So this one's been 135. So that's how we got to that. So here we can type in 100, 135 degrees. Okay. Um, 
So what are we going to do to solve this now? Well, here, we're just going to use the law of sines. So which ones, which ratio do I know? Well, I know, I know this one and this one, right? So here, if I wrote C over sine of, C over the sine of 25 degrees, right? Now, C over sine of C, let me write it this way, is equal to B over the sine of B. Or capital B, sorry. And so we can find out what B is. So B, so we'll plug this in, so we'll have 80.4, and then we're going to divide out by the sine of 25 is equal to B. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by sine of B. So we'll actually do this as sine of B. So it'd be the sine of B is 135. It's going to equal to B. And that's, if I crunch that through a calculator, it's roughly 134.5. So here, I'm going to put under B, 134.5. I know what C was. It was 80.4. Now we're going to do the same thing for A. So sine of C, C equals A, sine of A, which means C, sine of C, sine of A equals A. Crunch in the numbers here, which would be 80.4 sine of 25 times the sine of, in this case, 20. That gives us roughly A is equal to 6.51, and then we pipe in 6.51. Does that make sense how to do these? Group text is exploding on me. Uh, do not disturb. There we go. Okay, so that's how we solve a triangle. So let's do another. Oops. Hi. Let's do another example. So a satellite is orbiting the Earth and practically passes directly overhead. Um, is observed at stations in uh, Phoenix and in Los Angeles, which are uh, 340 miles apart. At the instance when the satellite is between the two uh, stations, the elevation, the angle of elevation is observed to be at 60 at Phoenix and 70 at Los Angeles. How far is the satellite from Los Angeles? So let's kind of do this. So here we have we'll draw a little city here. We'll call this one LA. We'll draw another cute city here. We'll call this Phoenix. And we know that this distance here is 340 miles. And when the satellite's coming overhead, so here on my little satellite, um, And so here, I want to know how was the distance from the satellite when these angles were 60 here and 75 degrees here. And these should be degrees. Okay. And so if I want to know this distance here, what am I solving for? Well. Here, we can just simplify this. All this simplifies if I just made it acute. A, B, C, where C is 340. And here, this is 70, this is 75 degrees. This is 60 degrees. We can quickly determine what this is. What's the angle, right, here? It'll be 180 minus 75 minus 60, which is equal to 45, right? So this is 45 degrees. So which one are we looking for? We want this angle here, right? We want this side here. So I'm going to be solving for little b. 
according to this, or the distance between LA and the satellite. Well, little b over sine of b is equal to, which one do we know? Well, we know c, so we'll have c over sine of c. And then we just move this over, so b equals c sine of b over sine of c, and we'll plug in the values. C here is 300 and, or 340 miles. Um, sine of B is 60. So sine of 60. And then here, sine of 45 degrees. And technically, um, well, sine of 60, is square root 3 over 2. Sine of this is square root. So technically, I really don't need a calculator. I could say this is square root 3 over 2 over square root 2 over 2. The over 2s cancel, so I get 340 square root 3 over square root 2, which is approximately, then you can chunk it through a calculator, 400 and, uh, 416. So, um, miles. And remember, since this is a problem, miles. And so we say the satellite, if we were good, good problem solvers, we say the satellite is 114 or approximately 114 miles from Los Angeles. Remember when you solve word problems, write your answers as a sentence. Um, when I have you solve word problems on the test, just because the, the incalculable number of sentences you write, you're probably just gonna give me a number, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so this was a uh, side uh, angle, side angle. Yes, that's correct. All right. Well, this is, all, this is all well and good, but we have what we call ambiguous cases here. So we can have an ambiguous case. So if we have angle, angle, side, um, there may be two triangles which make this happen. There may be one triangle to make this happen. There may be no triangles, right? Let's see if I can't draw some examples where this is the case. And so say we're given the side uh, A and then A and B, right? So here we're given a triangle. And so we can have a singular triangle that works this out. So here we have angle A. I know what B is, right? So B would be here and A would be, and A can come straight down and hit here. And so we have, this is forms one triangle. Here, if I know what angle, so this is one. I think if I show you two, it makes a little bit more sense what's going on, so let's do that. So if I have angle A here, and this is B, and my A is really long, right? Um, so if A is long, let me rewrite this real quick. Hold on, let me draw this out a little bit better. So let's pretend my A is pretty long. And so if it's pretty long, you can hit here or, oops, not that, not that. Let me draw my B longer, makes my life easier. Here, you can either hit here, A, and say this distance was 10, or you could hit here, A, for this distance being 10, right? And then here, if I drew it straight down, so you kind of a curve, and so you can see where it can hit too. It's kind of if you took like, you know, sticks and he's like, well, here's one, here's another one. You can kind of swing it so that this angle is correct. Because here, this distance, this distance and this distance are the same and uh, this angle still remains the same. But here, I can either be really close in or this still hits, keeps this angle and I could be further out. So I have the two options. Um, here, if it gets really long, you go back to the case where it's one again. So here, if I have angle of A, and B and A is really long. Notice here, here's A, but if I swung this around, it totally miss. And so this only has one option again. 
Or if A is too short, here if I have A is B and A is only this length, even if I went straight for it, oops, A, I can never hit the line, so this is none. Okay, so there's lots of ways that, so if I'm given side side angle, it could either, if I went straight down to the A and I hit it, that's one. If it's really long, if, if A is really, if it's much longer than B, right, in this case, there's only one, there's only one way to hit it is you have to let, you have to extend it out because if I extend it this way, I'm not hitting my triangle, right? I'm missing this angle here. If, it, if A is about the same length as B, I have like two options, right? Based off the angle. So let's solve one of these triangles and see if we, um, let's see what we get, okay? All right, so here we're given an ABC triangle and let's put in what we know, all right? Oops, that's a bit more of a triangle. So here, let's say this is 45 degrees, we'll call this A. Therefore, this would be seven square root of two and B here is seven, we're gonna call this B, we'll call this A. Therefore, this is C and this is C and this is B. And so let's check for, um, so what should we do here? So we have a side, we have one, we have two sides. So I have A and this and B and this. So the first thing I wanna solve for is B, right? So let's solve for B. And so here we'll have A over Actually, in this case, it makes sense to do sine of a over little a equals sine of b over little b. I know this info, I know this info, I know this info, so we're gonna solve for b here. So it'll be sine of a times b all over a equals the sine of b. And at this point, we're going to take the arc sine. So we're going to take B and be equal to the arc sine or inverse sine of sine of A little b over A. Okay, and then we're just plug in the values. So B equals what we have here. So inverse sine of sine of, so this would be sine of A is square root, or I'll just write it. You just check this through a calculator. Here we'll have seven, and we'll have seven square root of two. This gives me square root two over two, so the square root twos cancels, the seven cancels, and so you just give the inverse sine of a half, and the inverse sine of a half is 30 degrees, or pi over six. We'll just do degrees for now. And so now I have, uh, this one is 30 degrees. Uh, why did you use inverse of sine? Oh. So why did I use inverse sine? I want to know what the angle B is. I don't know what I don't know what sine of B is. And so here, if I have sine of B equals uh, a half, in order to figure out what B is, because that's this ends up being a half, I'm going to take B is equal to the um, inverse sine of a half, and that's what allows me to. Let me, let, me, let me do one step back, right? And so here I have this. And so in order to solve both sides, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the inverse sine of both sides. That's something I'm allowed to do, right? I'm gonna take the inverse sine of both sides. Sine inverse times sine, since these are inverses of each other, just pumps out B, right? Here, and that gives me the inverse sine or arc sine of a half. And just a way, oops, of telling what angles are given that. So I take the inverse sine 
so almost no one ever writes this step ever. Um, usually if you see sine of b, you just take the inverse of both sides, kind of like if you see the square root. If I had x squared equals 4, the next step you usually see is just plus or minus the square root of 4, right? It's the same thing here. We're just doing the square root is the inverse of the squared step, so we're just inverting it. Now notice one thing to be careful with now that you brought that up. Um, inverse of sine of a half. If we went back to our original triangle, where is sine a half, right? Well, sine's a half here at 30 degrees, right? But sine's also a half where? At, um, gee, my brain's gonna have the crunch right in my brain. 150 degrees, right? So those are our two options. Either it's 30 degrees or 150 degrees. That's both where sine's a half. And that's important to know, right? Your calculator will give you only this one. And we need to rule out this one real quick because it's possible. But if it was 150, if I had 150 plus 45, right? 150 plus 45 is 195. Well, there's no way that this has a negative angle. So here we're looking at this right here, the part where um, the length, the length here, because I had side angle. This this length here is long enough that it, if I was swing it back around, I'd miss, right? So it has to be 30 degrees, because the other option is 150, and that's too high. Okay, so once we know 30 degrees, we can quickly get the other information. So the other information here, so it's 45 plus 30. So the other information, this makes this 105, right? Because 180 minus 45 minus 30 equals 105. So I have that, I have that, I have that. And the only thing, the last thing I need to know is what is C, right? So to solve for C, we have C over sine of C equals, oh, uh, we could use A over sine of A, that's fine. So C equals A sine of C all over sine of A. Um, So C over sine of C sine of sine of A. So that is equal, what are the numbers I want to plug in here? A is 7 square root 2. Sine of C is the sine of 105. And then sine, oops, that should be capital A. Sine of capital A. And then sine of 45. And then if I crunch that through, that's about 13.5. So your homework today will be just solving a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of these triangles. All right. Um, yeah, let's solve. Let's solve two more real quick. And each of these triangles will solve. So here we have another ABC triangle. So let's just draw it in. And so here I know this is 43.1. This will be A. Here we'll have A on the other side, so 83.2 equals um, A, and then we'll have 24.6 equals B. So this would be B, this would be capital C, and our case C. All right. So let's kind of show this real quick. So here I have, I know A over A, and so the first thing I'm going to solve for is this angle B, right? So the side angle side, if you know A, um, you're going to solve for the side using the side you know and the angles and sides you know to solve for the other angle. Does everyone see why we're solving for B first? Because I have neither information about C, I have neither information about C, angle or C length, and so I don't know anything to solve for because I'll have two unknowns. But here I have both information for A and missing one information for B, and that's what allows me to use the law of sines. Okay. So here, 
the sine of b over b is equal to the sine of a over a. We just solve this out, so we'll have b equal to a sine or inverse sine of a over sine of a over b. Oops, this is b, this is a. Sorry about that. Get on a layer I can erase on. So if I crunch through this number, I'll get the inverse sine of b is two is two hundred and forty eight point six all over one hundred eighty six point two times the sine of forty three point one. All right, and so if you crunch through this, you're going to get it approximately equal to 65.8. Okay, so this is what we get for B. Now, let me make, make this super clear. So if you're doing, if you're doing side or, I guess this is angle side side or side side angle. I guess I should not write it that way. <laughs> I should legit not write it that way. <laughs> That's probably why the book writes it. Our side side angle, not the other way around. <laughs> so the side side angle way. <laughs> it makes sense in my head. We have an angle, a side, and a side. So what is that? Angle side side, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so in this case, once you solve for the missing angle, um, let me make it excessively clear how to determine if there is a triangle, if there isn't a triangle, or what we must do to solve and get what we need to do. Okay, and so let's go over that real quick. So here we got this angle here is 65.8, right? And that makes a triangle, right? That makes this triangle where this is 65.8. And then here I'll have an angle up here. Um, if I just crunch through that real quick, that should be 71.1, right? These two minus this gives me 71.1. But there's another triangle. What's the other triangle? Well, inverse sine, inverse sine only gives you values here, right? Inverse sine as I mentioned before, only gives you the values between uh, pi over negative pi over two to pi over two, or from minus 90 to 90, right? That's the range of inverse sine. But notice, we could have a triangle that looks like this, where it's A, and, and then I bring this way in like this. This is another option for that triangle. Well, to figure out what the other option is, because here I found this sign, I need to, I want to find what the corresponding one is over here. In order to find that, you just take 180 minus 65.8, and that gives us, um, that gives 114.2. But, so this is the other angle that is possible, right? 114.2, but does that make a triangle? So 180 minus 114.2 um, minus this, which is 43.1. Well, that leaves me with 27 points. This. And so this is another viable option. Last time when we did that, last time when we did this, when we added up, the other option was 150. Well, 180 minus 150 only left me with 30, but I know the other angle is 45, and so that's not enough, right? Here, when I did this option, we get, uh, I'm left with 20, I'm left with, I'm left after I minus out the two, I still can form an angle. So there's actually two possible triangles here that we get to solve for. We solve for this one, and then we're going to solve for this one, where it's a um, a b c, where this angle here is 142 degrees.
Okay. And so this comes with two options. How do we figure out this option? I'm going to be very clear on this. Once you, if you have the side angle, if you have side side angle or the other acronym I wrote on the board, um, which might be nice to remember because it's an expl expletive and you think, oh man, it's the expletive. I, ha I have to do the harder one, right? Um, <laughs> Once you, get, once you get what the value would be, check if 180 minus that value leaves you with enough, um, will give you the other angle. Figure out if that other angle plus, it will give you enough, if that, that angle minus what was the given angle, so these two angles minus, it gives you enough for C. Most of the cases it will not, but in some cases it will like this one, and that's all you have to do to check, okay? You'll, you'll do, you'll do, uh, something like this on the homework, okay? So here we're left with all this. Here, once again, we can solve for C. Um, here you're given three sides and that. Just for the sake of time, I'm gonna give you what C is. Uh, C is approximately 257.8 in this case, but right here with these angles, uh, 43.1, and then this is only, this right here is 21.7. And here I have 248.6, and here I have 146.2. What's left here, what left to end up being here is 105.2. And you can solve for that like we've been solving for before. The main point of this question is once I get this angle, realize there's two possible triangles that's gonna make, okay? So we call this ambiguous. We don't know which one it is, ambiguous. I'm not gonna spell this, thing. ambiguous. I'm just not gonna spell it, so I'm not gonna try. <laughs> All right, let me show you the last thing that can happen here. So let's draw this triangle in. Here I have, this is 42 degrees. Here I have A is 70. Here I have A, uh, B is 122. So this is my A. So this would be my angle B. This would be my angle A. And here would be my little C and angle C. Okay, if we crunch through this, we're gonna always do this. It's always the same if I'm given this. So sine of B is equal to um, sine of B over B is equal to the sine of A over A. I know both of this information. I know this information, so I can solve through. So here I'll get the sine of, well, actually, we've done this enough time. I'm comfortable just saying the sine of B, or B equals the inverse sine of B times sine of A over A, like we solved many times before. But when I crunch through this number, I'm gonna get B equals the inverse sine of 120 over the sine of 42 divided by 70. Well, that's equal to, B is equal to the inverse sine of 1.17. One well, the inverse of sine cannot take in that number, right? Because no sine, sine, remember when we talked about range and domain, sine goes between negative one and one. So there is no angle that I can plug into sine that's gonna give me this, right? This is it's out of its range, right? So this does not exist. And since this does not exist, this does not exist, right? And so in this case, Neither of these triangles, so neither does this, since this can't exist, this triangle doesn't exist. So this isn't a real triangle. There is no such triangle. So there's no such triangle. Okay. And so that's one of the other ones. This is the only ambiguous case. So we've seen it, we've done it. All right, so let's go on to the, let's, get, let's do the next set of